What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. Today, we're going to be talking about my top 36 running backs as we head into week 11 of the fantasy football season. We already dropped the wide receiver version of this episode here on the channel today, so make sure you guys are subscribed. That way, you never miss any future content. But without wasting any more time, let's hop right into today's video and let's start talking about these running backs. So as you can see, I got the tier maker pulled up on the screen. We got seven tiers of running backs to get through all 36 players in my rankings here today. We're going from the elite running back ones all the way down to the flex plays, and we'll talk about these guys in groupings. So let's kick it off with tier one. Tier one is those elite RB ones here in week 11. I got three guys in this tier. You probably already know the names, Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey, and Derrick Henry. These are the top three running back plays in my rankings this week. Saquon, he plays on Thursday night, so we should get to see him here fairly soon and Christian McCaffrey he's the only other guy that I really want to talk about in detail he gets a really good matchup he looked pretty solid last week if you had any kind of I guess worries about him potentially splitting some carries with Jordan Mason that did not happen Christian McCaffrey got a pretty heavy workload right away and he gets a good matchup this week against the Seattle Seahawks who currently rank 25th against the running back position giving up 23.3 fantasy points per game to that running back position group so all of these guys we're not really thinking about sitting them these are must starts and by far the best plays the running back position so let's move on to tier two tier two I got five running backs and those are going to be the high-end running back ones I got Joe Mixon Bijan Robinson Jameer Gibbs Kyron Williams and Devon Achan as the next five guys in my rankings tons of great matchups here in this tier let's kick it off with Joe Mixon who comes in at number four he plays on Monday Night Football he gets the Dallas Cowboys now we know the Dallas Cowboys are going to be without Dak Prescott this is also a great matchup for running backs the Dallas Cowboys currently rank 29th against the running back position giving up almost 20 25 fantasy points per game to that group so should be a great opportunity for Joe Mixon to rack up a ton of points for you on Monday night hopefully securing your W now Jameer Gibbs coming in at number six he has a good matchup this week against Jacksonville they are 28th against the running back position giving up nearly 25 points as well so this should be a great matchup for him also we'll talk about David Montgomery later but both of those guys are going to have a good matchup here this week Kyron Williams gets a good one against the New England Patriots currently 27th giving up about 24 fantasy points per game and Devon H and he gets the Las Vegas Raiders who are 26th giving up about 24 fantasy points per game so tons of players here in this tier all littered with great matchups here in fantasy football this week so Joe Mixon Jameer Gibbs Kyron Williams Devon Achan even Bijan Robinson even though it's not technically a good matchup we're firing all of these guys up no questions asked now let's move on to tier three tier three also has five running backs and this is going to be those low end RB ones I got Alvin Kamara coming in at number 9, 10, Brees Hall, 11, Jonathan Taylor, 12, Kenneth Walker the third, and 13, Chase Brown. Now, there's two bad matchups, technically, that we need to talk about in this tier. Alvin Kamara has a bad matchup against the Cleveland Browns. They are currently the eighth best defense against running backs, only giving up about 17.7 fantasy points per game. To me, the bad matchup doesn't really matter. Alvin Kamara is matchup proof. He's a guy who still, even in bad matchups, can be a RB1 for our fantasy football teams, and that's because he is used in the receiving game. He's used in the run game. He gets some goal line carries. Taysom Hill is going to be involved. He's going to be annoying at times. It doesn't matter. Alvin Kamara, he's going to be a play for us here this week, and is a low end running back one. Now Chase Brown technically has a bad matchup as well. He gets the Los Angeles Chargers who are the third best defense against running backs right now. They're only giving up about 14.7 fantasy points per game but last week Chase Brown technically had a bad matchup against the Baltimore Ravens and somebody left a comment for me on our Monday recap saying stop sleeping on Chase Brown. I wanted to temper the expectations. We hadn't seen Chase Brown go against a bad matchup so far. He gets a bad matchup this week. I don't really care. I think he's a low end RB1. He is getting a massive work load Khalil Herbert came in first touch fumble didn't really see the football field the rest of the day Chase Brown should have a smash play just because of the volume alone so Chase Brown for me a low-end RB1 I don't know if this is still sleeping on Chase Brown for me this is a pretty good ranking for Chase Brown so we have him as the running back 13 here this week now let's move on to my tier four tier four is going to be the safe running back twos guys that I'm very comfortable just playing as a running back two this week I got six players in this tier it's going to go Josh Jacobs James Cook David Montgomery Kareem Hunt Aaron Jones and DeAndre Swift now those are the 
running backs that I think are safe running back twos. We kind of already talked about David Montgomery, the good matchup. We talked about that with Jameer Gibbs. Obviously, the same thing applies. So David Montgomery, we don't got to talk about that great matchup for him. Kareem Hunt has a good matchup against Buffalo. Buffalo's been very tough against wide receivers so far this year. We talked about that with DeAndre Hopkins in the wide receiver episode, but they are very bad against the running back position, currently 31st. So the second worst team against running backs, giving up almost 27 fantasy points per game. Kareem Hunt, there has been rumors that Isaiah Pacheco is very close to returning, probably not going to be in the lineup this week. At least that's what Andy Reid said. So I think Kareem Hunt gets the majority of the workload here this week. Probably another smash play for Kareem Hunt before Isaiah Pacheco gets back into the lineup. So keep firing up Kareem Hunt if you have him in your leagues. As far as the bad matchups go, the only person who has a bad matchup in this tier is going to be James Cook. James Cook gets the Kansas City Chiefs. We've talked about them at length this year for running backs. They're the number one defense. They continue to be the number one defense against running backs, only allowing about 12 fantasy points per game. Thing is, James Cook, he gets it done in the air. He gets it done on the ground. He gets some goal line carries. He should do enough to be a safe running back to this week, but I think kind of viewing him as an RB1, which he does have the RB1 upside some weeks. I don't know if he has that this week against a very tough Kansas City Chiefs defense. And then the only other player that we need to talk about is Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, he is going to be questionable with a rib injury. He is going to be limited in practice this week. We're going to keep an eye on the injury reports. If Aaron Jones plays, he should be fine. We could view him as a safe running back too, but there is a chance that he is limited this week and goes in with a questionable tag and maybe or maybe doesn't play this week. I'm just keeping an eye on that. If he doesn't play, it would be Cam Akers who would be the next running back up on the depth chart. At least that's the way it's looked over the last couple of weeks. A lot of people have liked Ty Chandler, myself included. It looks like Cam Akers is the handcuff to Aaron Jones. So if he cannot go, it would be Cam Akers. Now let's move on to tier five. Tier five, I got five running backs and these are the fringe running back twos. I got J.K. Dobbins, Ramondre Stevenson, Najee Harris, Nick Chubb, and Tony Pollard. And that kind of rounds out my fringe running back twos. Now there's a couple bad matchups in here that have guys moving down my rankings. The one of them is going to be Najee Harris at running back 22. He gets that tough Baltimore defense matchup. So we talked about that with Chase Brown last week. They're a top seven defense against the running back position. Najee Harris, he's, uh, let's just say not as explosive as Chase Brown. So maybe there's a chance he doesn't get as much work. He could still fall into the end zone. This should be a fine matchup. It should be a tough divisional matchup uh, between the Steelers and the Ravens. But Najee Harris, He's a fringe running back too for me this week just because of the tough defensive matchup there in Baltimore. Now, Tony Pollard, he also has a tough matchup. He goes against the Minnesota Vikings. We've talked about this in the wide receiver episode as well. The Minnesota Vikings, they have been very bad against wide receivers, but they've been very good against running backs. So Tony Pollard, he gets that matchup against Minnesota. Minnesota is fourth against the running back position, only giving up about 16 fantasy points per game. We'll see what happens with Tony Pollard. He's also a little bit banged up right now. He's not technically on the injury report. He got knocked out of last game and then came back in. We saw more Tajay Spears than we wanted. I think he's playing through an injury right now, and that's kind of limiting his overall explosiveness and his overall upside. For me, a very fringe running back two option here this week. You see, he's just barely cracking that top 24. Now, another guy in this tier who has a great matchup that we can talk about is Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb goes against the New Orleans Saints. They are currently 30th against running backs this year, so they do have a tendency to give up some points to that running back position, giving up about 25.6 fantasy points per game. Nick Chubb, he's still recovering from that injury. This offense is going to be under Jameis Winston, obviously, so we'll see what happens with Nick Chubb. He's a fringe running back too for me, but the matchup does look positive for him here this week. Now let's move on to Tier 6. Tier 6 for me is going to be those low upside RB3s. I got a total of six running backs in this tier, and a lot of bad matchups actually we'll talk about. Uh, you got Raheem Moster in here, Rico Dowdle, Austin Eckler, Travis Etienne, Alexander Madison, and Brian Robinson Jr. That rounds out my tier six of low upside RB3s. Good matchup, and the only good matchup in this tier for Raheem Mostert. We talked about that with Devon H. and obviously going against the Las Vegas Raiders. 26th, giving up about 24 fantasy points per game. So same thing should apply to Raheem Mostert. Maybe he gets some goal line carries. He didn't really get them last week. We'll see what happens. Um, but Raheem Mostert, he's still a low upside RB3 if you need to play him in a pinch. The bad matchups, and there's a lot of them. We'll talk about all of them. Rico Dowdle playing against the Houston Texans. That is a bad matchup for him. Currently, the Houston Texans are sixth best against running backs, giving up only 17 fantasy points per game. We also talked about Cooper Rush slash Trey Lance slash whoever the hell it may be at the backup quarterback. They even signed Will Greer. We'll see what happens, man. This is bad news bears for the Dallas Cowboys for the rest of the way. It feels like this offense is going to be very bad. And so I can't really trust Rico Dowdle and he gets that tough matchup. So it's just a cherry on top for me. Austin Eckler and Brian Robinson Jr. They get a bad matchup against the second best Philadelphia Eagles defense, only giving up about 14.6 fantasy points 
points per game. Now, I got Austin Eckler ahead of Brian Robinson. They play on the Thursday night game, so we got to wait and kind of see what happens. If Brian Robinson cannot go, who has been dealing with a hamstring injury for the last couple of weeks now, Austin Eckler would move up closer to that fringe RB2 territory. I think I'd even just move him up into that tier, so he would be right behind Tony Pollard for me. If Brian Robinson can go, I think I'm going to move him above Austin Eckler in this tier, and then Austin Eckler would go down into the flex place. So some things to kind of figure out as we get these injury reports, as we get closer to Thursday night football. It's tough because it's a short week for Brian Robinson, who has been dealing with that injury, but we'll see what happens. Obviously, stay tapped into the Discord, stay tapped into uh, the channel. That way you see some of the updates as they come in. Now let's talk about Travis Etienne because he gets a bad matchup this week against the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions are a top five defense right now against the running back position, only giving up 17 fantasy points points per game. It looks like he has kind of taken back over the RB1A in this offense over Tank Bigsby. So I am ranking him as such, but he still comes in at 28. Tough matchups, splitting carries, not a great offense with Mac Jones under center. All of these things considered. Really not excited to play Travis Etienne, but you can play him if you need him. Now let's move on to Tier 7. Tier 7 is going to be those flex plays and nothing more than the flex plays. I got Audric Estime. I got Jalen Warren, Javante Williams, Tyler Algier, Tank Bigsby, and Gus Edwards. Now really only a few bad matchups that we need to talk about about here and I'm also going to talk about Audric Estime but the bad matchups are Jalen Warren like we talked about with Najee they go against the Baltimore Ravens same thing applies to him and Tank Bigsby bad matchup plus questionable with the ankle same thing applies to what we just talked about with Travis Etienne so we got those matchups out of the way but Audric Estime to me he's the guy that I'm playing in the Broncos backfield if you have to play any of these guys he took a majority of the carries last week over Javante Williams it feels like Javante Williams who is scheduled to be a free agent this offseason may be getting worked out of this offense for younger options like Audric Estime, who was drafted by Sean Payton. Estime, he was one of the top waiver wire pickups for us this week. And I think if you have to flex him, you need running back plays. He's a guy that you can play, but he is very, very risky because I would not be surprised if by an odd chance, Sean Payton ends up working Javante Williams in, has Jaleel McLaughlin taking carries, has Audric Estime taking carries, and then it becomes a very messy backfield. So a ton of risk with Audric Estime, but I did want to put him above Javante Williams as the number one running back in this Denver Broncos backfield. And for me, I have to get risky here this week in one of my leagues. I have Chuba Hubbard on by Audric Estime. I'm picking him up off the waiver wire and playing him. So you see, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I'm playing him in a league. It's very risky. I don't feel good about it at all by any means, but it was between Tyler Algier and Audric Estime for my plug-in. I'm going Audric Estime, baby. So if you want to play Audric Estime, you can. Just know it's going to be a hell of a ride and it's going to be very risky here this week. So there you have it. That's my top 36 running backs in rankings and tiers as we head into week 11 of the fantasy football season. If you haven't checked out that wide receiver version of the episode, make sure you go check that one out. It did get dropped on the channel earlier today. And while you're over there on the channel, make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you hit the like button on this video and make sure you go join the free discord with all of that out of the way though. I have nothing else for you today, so I will see you on our next episode. But until then, peace out.